I'm a big fan of sharing my personal feelings about bad movies. It seems to be a problem, I just have to blurt out exactly how I feel and what I'm thinking at all times. And if you stick around for bloopers, I'm sure you'll find out how I was feeling at the beginning of this video. We have previously covered the best movies of the last decade, but now let's take a look at the bottom of the barrel. The ones we hate to admit that we watched. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 5 worst horror movies of the decade. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. And with that, let's jump in. In at number 5, The Gallows. I still remember going to the movie theatre to watch this movie, I would have chewed my own hand off in order to leave. I also felt that way when watching The Revenant, but that's neither here nor there. That was the most overrated film I've ever seen in my whole life. I was so bored. I was so bored I was angry. And I needed to leave but I couldn't because I was on a date. <laughs> but I'm not with that person anymore, so... That's how things worked out. Released in 2015 and directed by Chris Loving and Travis Clough, The Gallows is a found footage horror movie that follows a group of high school students who resurrect a theatre show to honour the anniversary of a tragedy that occurred 20 years prior. They quickly learn though that some things are better left alone. The movie is a giant cliche and adds nothing new to the found footage genre. If anything, it makes it worse. Stale, almost. Plus the movie was boring. You can watch a bad, entertaining movie, but a bad boring movie, well that should be a criminal offence. The movie truly was terrible and critics agree with me, with it receiving a 15% on Rotten Tomatoes, with the general consensus reading, narratively contrived and visually a mess. The Gallo sends viewers on a shaky tumble to the bottom of the found footage horror barrel. It was also disappointingly one of those movies that show off all of their scares in the trailer. It's weak. Just make a good trailer, don't show off all your best moments in it. No one's gonna want to watch a movie. Also guys, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot. So thank you. Go smash that like button. Coming in at number four, we have Truth or Dare. This movie truly was a mess and it shocks me that someone funded this. Someone put money, cold hard cash, into this film. Can't quite wrap my head around that. Released in 2018 and directed by Jeff Wadlow and starring Lucy Hale, Tyler Posey, Violet Bean and Hayden Seto, Truth or Dare follows a group of college students who play a game of Truth or Dare while on vacation in Mexico. However, they soon realize there are deadly consequences if they don't follow through on their tasks. Things descend into madness for the group who are forced to complete their truth or dares and those who don't begin to die. Sucks for them. The game is very much real and kind of like It Follows and Final Destination. It follows the group and there is no escaping its clutches. Smiling people begin to pop up everywhere which are arguably the creepiest part of the movie and the group are forced to blurt out their truths or commit horrific dares. The movie was panned by critics with it receiving a 16% on Rotten Tomatoes with the general consensus reading, Truth or Dare's slick presentation isn't enough to make this mediocre horror outing much more frightening than an average round of the real life game. It was neither scary or inventive and was a movie I can safely say people were counting down the minutes until the end. Honestly, just play a real game of Truth or Dare. And if you don't like Truth or Dare, you're playing it with the wrong people. That's the truth. In at number three, we have 11, 11, 11. Yes, they actually made a movie about 11, 11, 11. For those who don't know, there are many people out there that believe 11, 11 has some important significance, with many believing that you can wish for something at 11, 11, and it might come true. I hate to break it to you, but this isn't real. I've made many wishes at 11.11 and none of them have come true. I hate to break it to you but this isn't real. Anyway, in 2011 a movie was directed by Darren Lynn Bozeman which was released on, you guessed it, November 11th, 2011. The film itself is also set on the 11th day of the 11th month and concerns an entity from another world that enters the earthly realm through heaven's 11th gate. 11. Could you please repeat that? Eleven. 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 Could you please repeat that? Fun time. Centering on a man who travels to Barcelona following the death of his wife and child, he meets his religious brother and terminally ill father. It is there that he discovers the impending events that will plague his life and will take place all on November 11th, 2011. Lovely stuff. There are no jump scares to speak of, well, effective ones that is, and the main character spends the entire movie obsessing over the numbers 11, 11, 11. There are gaping plot holes throughout and the film is just 
generally dull. Critics seem to agree with my review of the movie being bad, really bad, not even enjoyable, just straight up bad. Ron Tomatoes gave it a review of 7% with David Fear from Time Out stating, I quote, if the ineffectiveness knob goes up to 10, this film manages to turn it up to you know what. In at number 2, Slender Man. Slender Man is a terrifying creepypasta that had a chance to really make an impact on mainstream media and in cinema. However, the movie bombed and it bombed hard. Released in 2018 and directed by Sylvain White, Slender Man is based on the character of the same name and stars Joey King, Julia Goldani, Tellis, and Jazz Sinclair, and follows four friends who are fascinated by the Slender Man lore. And they attempt to summon him. Bad news bears. Then things quickly spiral out of control when one of the friends goes mysteriously missing. None of the characters in this movie are likeable or developed in any way. Not even a creepy looking slender could salvage the movie, with the scares falling flat throughout. The movie performed so badly that it received the low rating at 8% on Rotten Tomatoes, with the consensus reading Slender Man might be thin, but it's positively robust compared to the flimsy assortment of scares generated by the would be chiller that bears his name. Jazz Sinclair also went on to be nominated for the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Supporting Actress. It's a damn shame because this is one of those occasions where the movie certainly had a chance to succeed, with Slender Man being an absolutely terrifying creepypasta that still haunts many readers today. However, Hollywood really dropped the ball with this one. And finally, in at number one, we have The Haunting of Sharon Tate. The fact that someone funded this movie is utterly baffling to me. At this point, I think we all need to collectively agree to stop making movies about the death of Sharon Tate. Let her rest in peace, for God's sake. Released in 2019 and directed by Daniel Ferrance, The Haunting of Sharon Tate stars Hilary Duff as Sharon Tate, as well as Jonathan Bennett, that guy from Mean Girls that's appeared nowhere else, and literally no one else is in the movie, that I've heard of anyway. The movie is of course based on the 1969 murder of Sharon Tate and her friends Jay Sebring, Wojciech Frykowski and Abigail Folger. As most will know, under the order of Charles Manson, some of his followers broke into the home of Sharon Tate, who at the time was married to Roman Polanski, and was almost 9 months pregnant. The murders were absolutely brutal and devastating, with it scarring many of the officers who were called to the scene for years to come. Now, The Haunting of Sharon Tate follows these murders in the most distasteful way possible. It follows Sharon Tate, who begins to suffer from premonitions of her murder at the hands of Charles Manson's cult. Throughout the movie, she begins to believe that the Manson cult are trying to kill her, and of course, none of her friends believe her until it's too late. Then, of course, some of the cult members show up at the home and kill the group. This isn't a spoiler simply because what this is what actually went down in real life, aside from the premonition part. Now I will be spoiling the last few minutes of the movie to really get you to understand how awful and offensive this movie truly was. I also don't think any of you are going to be upset that I'm spoiling the end of it, because it really is a bad movie. Sharon wakes to realise that she has been a ghost the entire time, and that her premonitions were in fact memories. The movie then ends with her and her friends walking away from the home and into the afterlife, with Tate holding her child that she never got to give birth to. Not only was the movie terrible, but it's also shamelessly exploited the deaths of real life people. Well there we have it, do you guys agree with our list? Were there any terrible horror movies from the last decade that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part 2. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos, top 5 best horror movies of the decade. Ali Heppard said, you're dressed like a homicidal maniac, we look just like everybody else. I did look at what I was wearing that day. It was just normal clothes. I guess that's why you're saying it. Are you saying I'm a homicidal maniac? You wouldn't be wrong. Probably. Taya001 said, You're going on her way needs to sod off. Preach. Thanks. Glad you got my back. Everyone wants to attack me. I can't do anything right. I'm either, I'm either thick or I'm slim thick or I'm lean. But it doesn't please any of you. Thomas Jackson said, I'm dressed up as myself, the Dark Queen. If you yell, I'll kill you. Yeah, I'd be okay going out that way. Go Lucy, all hail the Dark Queen. Yes, that is something I said. I was dressed up as myself, the Dark Queen. It's just a fact of life. If that's the way you want to go out, I'll be over in a minute. Unknown said she referred to herself as the Dark Queen. It's official now. I thought it was official for the last like two years, I guess. Now it's official. Just now. Thorin693 said, Lean or chunky, the Dark Queen rules. Literally, like, you'll probably start to question why I'm responding to these comments, but when all the comments were this, I had to pick a few of them. <laughs> they were all about my weight. Back off. 
I couldn't respond to any others because there were none others. There were no others. FX Rodriguez said, Lucy is always right. I know I am. You don't need to tell me otherwise. I am right. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. And until next time, see you later. For those who don't know, there are many people out there that believe 11. <laughs> I'm gonna be saying 11, 11, 11 a lot. With many believing that you can wish for something at 11, 11, 11, and it might come true. I hate to, or 11, 11. 11, 11. Hold on. Go back. <laughs> Not just 11, 11, 11. I'm starting to really hate the number 11. Sucks.